Hi and welcome back to my channel. It's the last day of August. The summer's almost gone, hasn't it? It's funny, I remember at the beginning of the summer thinking, I really don't like Slimming World in the summer. I'm not a summer food person, I'm an autumn winter food person. And I'm really grateful that the cooler weather's back and I can focus on cooking meals again. Right, something I've been very much looking at for a wee while is the law of attraction. Now, many years ago, being involved with AA as a 12 step program, but using it as a weight loss program, I learned a few phrases that really helped me. One was act as if, the second one was fake it to make it, and the third one was believe and receive. And all of these things I think are linked to the law of attraction. And what I've been looking at this week is, is very much in the field of possibility and positivity. So not believing that I have to stay where I am in any particular thing, believing that I have the power within me to change things. And I've always said that the, one of the biggest things against me with regard to weight was that I believed I would always be fat. I used to say things like, I'm never gonna lose weight, I'm always going to be fat, this won't work for me and I'm trying in my life as time goes by to actually have faith in this plan, have faith in my, my ability to work this plan and believe that I can change things. Now I can look at this in many ways, um, there are lots of books and lots of knowledge out there. A, a book I've been reading this week is a book called the science of getting rich. And it doesn't just mean rich as in money, it means rich as in a better quality of life, rich as in um, the rewards, reaping the rewards of my actions and stuff like that. And I was thinking about it when I was lying in bed this morning and I thought you can apply this to weight loss. And my act as if, or believe and receive, or fake it to make it, is believing that I am slim. Because I have no visual um, reminders of my size, I can't look in a mirror being blind, I can't look in a mirror and see this size 10, 12 Jane or whatever and believe that that is me. I always have to go on what I feel on the inside and if I'm 100% honest, the Jane on the inside doesn't very often feel any different to the Jane at 22 stone. I am the same person. And Okay, I'm sitting in this chair today and I take up like half the chair. When I was 22 stone, I took up three quarters of this chair. So I can feel that I've got spatial awareness, but I haven't got visual awareness. So I've got to work on my mind because my mind rules everything. We are subject to about 60,000 thoughts a day. And if 59,000 of those thoughts are negative about ourselves, that's where we stay. Now something I was listening to on a, on a vlog the other day about the law of attraction was saying that say you're living in a house and that's not the house you want to be living in. You want to be living in something with more space, something with more light, maybe more bedrooms, maybe a house you own, not a house you rent. If you don't appreciate and love the house you're living in, this law of attraction will keep you there because you're focusing on the negative all the time. And I think the same can be said about your body. Your body is a vessel, isn't it? It's a vehicle to get you from A to B. Your home is a dwelling place, it's a vessel. Your car is a vessel, a vehicle to get you from A to B. And if you've got a car, which is a bit of an old banger, and I'm not being judgmental here, because our car's 14 years old, but she's not an old banger, we look after her. Although Richard does remind me she needs cleaning. Um, it, on the outside, the inside, she's perfect. But if, if you've got an old banger and you know that you could do with a better vehicle, a more reliable vehicle, a more comfortable vehicle, unless you actually focus on appreciating the car that you've got, the car that gets you to A to B, and actually respecting it and looking after it, then the law of attraction will never attract to you a better vehicle. So I've been looking at that this week with regard to my body. Unless I appreciate the vessel I'm in and become 
a person who can love the body I'm in, then I'm always going to be battling against it. Now, most of the time, I, I do appreciate the body I'm in. I appreciate what it can do for me that it never used to be able to. You know, like sitting comfortably instead of sitting somewhere feeling like a beach whale. I can sit like this. I used to see people do this and think, God, I can't do that. My belly gets in the way. My legs are too fat. My boobs get in the way. But I could comfortably sit like this for hours now. When I'm reading, I can quite comfortably sit like this. Before, I would have been like, oh, in the chair, because I just didn't have a body that allowed me to cross my legs and comfortably cross my legs. I, it, when I was big, I'd cross my legs and my leg would be like up because my bottom leg was up here somewhere and this leg was massive. And appreciating what I've got today and being grateful for it, specifically being grateful for it, I think helps my journey no end. It helps me to focus on where I want to be in a positive way, rather than focusing on where I am in a negative way. I was talking to a lady in group this morning who needs to lose a pound and a half to get into the next stone bracket. And she's been hovering around there for weeks and weeks and weeks. And she gets within half a pound of being where she wants to be. So she gets bang on that stone. She can't get below it. And we were talking this morning. She kept saying, I'll never do it. I can't get there. It's not for me. Maybe I should call Target now. Although she knows she wants to lose at least another stone. All of those things are negative. And what we focus on, what we think about, is what we get. And I just, it's like um, in the book I was reading and in a film I watched this week, they were actually talking about treating the law of attraction in effect a bit like a genie's lamp. So, you know, in Aladdin, he rubs the lamp and he gets three wishes. Well, the law of attraction dictates you can get as many wishes as you like. It's not a limited thing. It's the law of quantum physics which is way, way, way above my head. I didn't even do science and biology properly at school, so quantum physics is beyond me. But the law of attraction says that what you desire, what you believe, you can attract. So I was trying to explain to this lady this morning without being clever clogs, that if you believe you're never gonna get there, if you believe it's not for you, if you believe this is as far as I can go, keep doing that, because that's all you'll ever get. If we want to get something different, we've got to behave and believe differently. And that's something I'm, I'm kind of studying at the moment and finding so interesting. I was trying to explain it to Jo when we were walking yesterday and the way I was wording it, it kept coming out as kind of the total focus being finance. That's not what it is. It's not about money. It's not about getting more into the bank and it's not about having so much more that you can fix the world because you think you've got enough money to put everybody else's lives right. It's about believing for yourself. So this week, this past week just gone, this fourth coming week, I want to believe wholeheartedly that I am going to have a weight that starts with an eight, which is where I want to be. It's my happy place is to be between eight stone 11 and eight stone 13. I know when I'm there that that's where I'm meant to be. I know that gives me a BMI of about 23. My BMI is currently 23 and a half, so I'm, I'm almost there. But to act as if, to believe and receive, to fake it, I am gonna go around this week believing that my weight starts with an eight. Now, I'm not that very far away. It's achievable. I know it's achievable because I've been there and I've done it. And I've done it for a sizable portion of my target membership. So, yeah, that's something I've been looking at this week and thinking about. Now, some funny things have happened to me this week because I believe of this, in this power of attraction. Um, just, yeah, a week yesterday, um, a, the day before, Joe had paid a check into my bank from his building society. And I did my banking on the Friday morning and the check had not gone into my bank. And I have an um, advanced bank account where checks clear within six hours. And I thought, this is odd, this has been 24 hours, no sign of the check. So I rang my banking people and I said to them, this doesn't usually happen. 
if I pay a check in or somebody gives me a check and I pay it in or like Joe gave the bill inside to check, paid it in, it clears within six hours. And she said, yes, it should have done. But she said, I have no trace of a check entering your bank account yesterday. Where did you pay it in? So I said, my usual branch, and I named the, the branch and the street it was on and the town it was in, city it was in. And she said, no, nope, nothing showing. If it doesn't show in another six hours, ring us back because we need to put a trace on this check. It may be lost. Well, we've got the receipts that you get when you pay it in. So we've got evidence that we've done it. But she said, um, because of this experience, I'm going to give you £50. I'll put £50 in your account for the inconvenience. Well, it wasn't really an inconvenience. I hadn't had to go anywhere. I was sitting in my chair with the phone in my hand. But thank you. I am grateful. I show gratitude. And I did, you know, I explained to her that I am very grateful. That was a really um, kind gesture. And then I went to group on the Saturday morning and jokingly said to um, Calvin, I bought my raffle tickets that I always buy, and I jokingly said to Calvin, oh, I'll have raffle tickets today because I'm going to win. And I believed it. I didn't just say it. It came out of me and I believed it. Well, there were two raffle prizes last Saturday. One was a £15 value-wise um, basket of fruit. And one was a £15 value-wise basket of vegetables. The first ticket that came out, Naomi said to me, it's yours, Jane, you've won. So internally, I'm doing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you feel a joy and an excitement. And okay, I said to her, Naomi, please draw it again because I did all my shopping yesterday afternoon. I've got enough fruit and vegetables to last me the week or as far into the week as we need to go with fresh stuff. And I knew it would be wasted. So she drew it again and there's a lovely couple in my group and they won it. And the guy was like, thanks, pet. That's really sweet of you. So Naomi went to draw the raffle ticket for the second basket and hey ho, I won it again. So I said to her, likewise, I can't use it. I, I hate to waste good food. Let me nominate somebody I would like to have it. And I nominated a young, a young girl in group and she was thrilled to have it. Those kind of things, if you buy raffle tickets, I suppose lottery tickets if you're into that sort of thing, if you buy anything like that with the belief that I never win anything, because we have people in group who will say, buy raffle tickets every week. I've never won a raffle in my life and I never will. I have a friend who I love dearly and her favourite quote is, if there was no such thing as bad luck, I'd have no luck. And she's such a funny lady. She's so witty and so clever. And when she says that, we always laugh. But does she really believe that? And is that what she's attracting to herself? Anyway, so that was that. That was my HSBC check, my two raffle, uh, my HSBC gift, my two raffle prizes. Then this week I was doing my banking on Thursday and a payment was made into my bank. I'm not going to say how much it was for, that's irrelevant, but I have no idea where it came from. Absolutely no idea where it came from. I could ring the bank and say, who paid this money into my account? But actually I don't want to. I want to just believe that it came because I was meant to have it. Believe and receive. I'm not saying this is a magic formula. I'm just saying it works. I believe it works. So I've been living this lifestyle this week and practicing these things. I uh, was talking to a friend earlier in the week and I do Audible, the book club, Audible. I pay £7.99 for one book credit a month, but on top of that, I probably buy six extra credits, which is 36 quid. And I was talking to a friend over coffee and I said to her, you know, really, I've got to stop this. I'm spending an average of £43 a month on books. It's too much. But that's how I love to read. I read three or four books every week. And I read three books at a time. So I'll be reading one book in the lounge, one book in my bedroom, and I'll have one on my mobile phone or wherever it's, it goes with me. So I tend to read three books at a time. And my friend rang me the next day and she said, oh, I've just noticed on Audible, you can now, instead of buying a monthly subscription, you can buy a 24 book subscription, which is 100 and, I think it was 109.99. So I thought about it and I thought, 24 books is not gonna last me a year, but it still works out at £4.58 a book instead of £7.99 a book. 
or six pound a book if you do the three book thing. It's, it's a good saving. You know, if you're knocking about £2.40 off every book when you're reading three or four a week, it's a good saving. So I rang up and I bought the 24 book contract. And then I, I rang my friend and I said, you've got me spending money again. I said, I've done it. And she went, have you? And I said, yeah, but it doesn't matter if the 24 books don't last me a year. I can buy another contract once that 24 book runs out. But it's such a good saving. And she was laughing and I said, what are you laughing at? She said, there's a cheque for £110 sitting on my coffee table ready for when you come for coffee on Wednesday. I wanted to get you that book contract, but I couldn't do it because you can only do it yourself. So I just hoped and wished that you would do it. And I wrote the cheque and I put it on my coffee table. And when you come on Wednesday, it's sitting there waiting for you. So her act as if, believe to receive, whatever, worked because she had believed that I would do it and she could pay for it. I find that incredible. It's not black magic. It's not greed. It's just believing and being realistic. So that's kind of what I've been looking at this week. Now, I've got a couple of other things written down, I think, Joe, haven't I? Because uh, Yeah, fun. why I don't eat slimming products. Something else, and this has been going on for a while in my life, and I just was struck this morning when I was lying in bed to write it down so I could actually share it. Why I don't eat slimming products. And there's a simple answer to that, and it's because I'm not on a diet. And I, I find that if I focus too much on looking at foods that are low, low sin, low, low calorie, fat free, um, full of additives and um, sweeteners, all those things that are specifically marketed at slimming products, at weight loss products. I don't do very well on them. They just don't suit my body because they remind my mental state continually. You're on a diet, you're on a diet. You've got to lose weight, you've got to lose weight. Now, months and months ago, when I used to go walking 50 odd miles a week to um, specifically lose weight, I had this little mantra, didn't I, Joe? Can you remember? Yeah. What I used to chant, he'll tell you. What did I used to chant? You've got to walk, got to lose weight. Yeah, every step I took. <laughs> got to walk, got to lose weight, got to walk. And it was like a mantra. And I absolutely convinced myself that to lose weight, I had to walk 50 plus miles a week. And on the weeks I couldn't walk that far, my mental state was dire. So now I don't do that. Now I walk when I can walk. And I think this week I've had three walks. Yeah because you've been at work and things. So I have not walked every day and I do not worry about it because I'm never a person who just sits on my backside all day. I can always find a job to do. I was up a ladder yesterday doing my top, top cupboards out. When I say in my top cupboards, my all of my kitchen cupboards have got three shelves at the top because they go right up to the ceiling. I can't reach the second shelf without standing on something because I'm five foot two. So I have to get the step ladders out to go up to the top and I had this overwhelming urge yesterday, empty the cupboards, wash them all out, put the stuff back so you know where everything is. I don't, when Joe's out, when he's at work, when he's at the gym, whatever, I don't just sit and wait for him to come home. As a blind person, I could do nothing. I could actually do nothing. Because sometimes things feel like hard work. So the old me used to procrastinate and do bugger all. This me wants to be moving, wants to be active. I'm in the habit of changing the beds twice a week and my mum says to me, that's not necessary. I mean, she changes her bed every Monday. <coughs> she cleans the windows every Tuesday. She washes the shower curtains every Wednesday. My mum's obsessed with housework, <laughs> but she's got a beautiful home. Oh, it's not necessary to change your beds twice a week. Why not? I've got the time, I've got the energy, I've got the enthusiasm and I love to slide into a clean, fresh bed at night. All my bedding is white, and I have it in my head that unless I keep it clean, it's all gonna look very gray. So things like that, you know, 
I want to live an active life, but I don't want my active life to be something that becomes a burden like, I've got to walk, I've got to lose weight, I've got to walk, I've got to lose weight. Because then I'm acting as if I've got to walk, I've got to lose weight. I'm receiving that same signal continually, Jane, you haven't walked far enough this week, you don't deserve to lose weight. When the bottom line is, it's down to what I put in my mouth. Okay, what those scales say on a Saturday morning, but not allowing all of that to be a barometer of how I feel. So I'm, I avoid things with artificial sweeteners in because I am firmly convinced that chemically artificial sweeteners work on my brain in exactly the same way that sugar does. And I am firmly convinced that physically artificial sweeteners work on my body in exactly the same way that sugar does. I know there is scientific proof out there that people's bodies react to artificial sweeteners and they release, it releases insulin and you're off on that same cycle. And I've said before, sugar is my nemesis. Excuse me, I've got a hair. Sugar is my nemesis. Sugar is what brings me down. Sugar is what burdens me. Sugar is what frustrates me. I need to steer as clear of it as possible. And artificial sweeteners do exactly the same thing to me. So I know that lots of people swear by skinny syrups and things like that. That doesn't work for me because it destroys my mental ability to think clearly, to act energetically and to be willing to change. I don't want to be stuck in a sweet cycle. I really don't. So news from group this morning. The new Slimming World meals are out tomorrow. There's one or two that don't sound too bad. They're not for me, but I think people might enjoy them if you find them convenient. The cottage pie's back. Um, the freebie with them from tomorrow is going to be six cake flavoured Muller Lights, which are now sinned. But the one interesting thing that I, I'm looking forward to, um, I don't know what access I'll have to it, but on the 22nd of September, that is the week of the 50th birthday celebrations for Slimming World. And that is the week that Margaret Miles Bramwell's autobiography comes out. And she tells the story of how she started Slimming World 50 years ago in a scout hut in Mansfield with something like 50 miners' wives. And she must have been a young woman because if she's 71 now, she was 21 when she started Slimming World. And I remember Slimming World back to those early days, well, early 70s, not necessarily 69, but early 70s when it was actually called J and M Slimming. Can anybody tell me, because I can't find the information, who was J? Because M is obviously the Margaret Miles Brownwell, but I've got in my memory that the J was a Janet, but who was she? And why is she not still a part of it? I keep meaning to ask my consultant and then I forget. But does anybody know? I'm sure somebody must, because there must be people who've been around Slimming World as long as I have, back to the days of J&M Slimming. So Margaret Miles Brownwell's autobiography is going to be called something like Wild Women Do. I think it might be something like Wild Women Do and They Just Keep Doing. I can't remember exactly. But it'll be on sale in group to members for £6. But I'm assuming it will be available on Amazon and other places because surely she won't limit, limit the publicity numbers, publication numbers rather, to Slimming World members. Even though, you know, there are 19,500 groups and she could sell a lot of copies. I would assume it will be available on Amazon if you don't go to group. I might try and get a couple of copies to give away at the end of the month, but we'll see. So, Saturday morning, get up, do the usual stuff, go to group, thoroughly enjoy it. The nearest group to my group, which was probably a bit too close to a successful oh, sorry, group, actually, getting towards 25 yeah, minutes. actually folded last week. So we had some new members come over from that group, some fabulous slimming histories, some fabulous weight loss, you know, ladies who've lost multiple stones. And it's good to have them on board in our group. So I went into group. I didn't have to pay this week because last week took me back into Target. I got up this morning, I put on these size eight trousers. I felt fantastic. I felt a difference from last week. If, I'd put, if I was a betting woman, which I'm not, I would have put a hundred pound on the fact that I'd lost weight this week. I stuck to plan 100%. 
I've had nine and a half since every day except yesterday when I had 11 because the book says optimum weight loss, stick to 10 since, so I did it. I have had a fabulous week of food, lots of salmon, I've had chicken, I've had all sorts of stuff, my usual fish, sushi and everything. Fabulous week. The one thing I have been doing this week, um, one or two days, I've been drinking energy drinks. But I was drinking the sugar-free one and it was because they were in the fridge. I hate waste. What's left of them will stay in the fridge until some bugger else drinks them. Because so I went to group this morning, I stepped on the scales and I gained a pound and a half. And the old me, the me of a month ago even, would have wanted to kick those scales across the room. I'm learning now to accept it because that is not the barometer of how I'm going to feel going forward. I've come home from group and I think because Joe talks sense into me a lot of the time as well, but I've come home from group just as motivated to continue. I'm not chasing a weight loss. I'm chasing this happy place, this feeling good, my clothes fitting properly. I've got all of that. I'm one pound over target again. Now next Saturday is my birthday, so I was hoping to have dropped a bit this week to give me leeway next Saturday. Why do I need leeway next Saturday? It's my birthday, it's not an excuse to stuff my face, you know? I've still got some of that mentality in there that says, any excuse to eat. Do you know I've heard a thousand excuses of why people eat this week. I don't need to make excuses for why I eat. It's no big deal, it's just food, and I just eat what I need to eat. And I find satiation, and I'm never hungry. What more could I want? Anyway, it's been a brilliant week. And um, thank you for being there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for everybody who comments. I do appreciate the fact that people add to my channel by comments. I'll be back next Saturday. Have a great week. It works if you work it. And again, it's not failure. Cheers.